Monster Energy Cup Series qualifying, presented by Ford Performance. He's coming off the track of 38, uh, David Reagan. He's just below the cut line in 13th, 48.041. One lap time for Reagan. So he will not advance to round two. And currently 20 cars have been on the track of the 40 that are here. This is Clint Boyer on the clock and three tenths of a second off of what Chase Elliott ran, but that's still that lap good enough for fourth quickest, 47.489 for Clint Boyer. That bumps Chris Busher below the cut line. Let's flash back. There's the 18 of Kyle Busch. Earlier this year, the Daytona 500 goes sideways right in front of the pack, collecting the 88 of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, we saw varying strategies with it being the first stage race of the year. A lot of teams who are on different cycles. The 18 was actually out there trying to stay in the lead lap, had a flat tire in front of the field that got caught up in it. The good news for the 88 is that they were up front when they caught, caught them in that crash. We haven't seen that on the eight in the last two or three speedway races. And right here, the good news is we didn't know if anybody could match Chase Elliott's time of that 18. And right now, Dale Jr. is right on pace to run of almost exact same time. Looks like he may be. It's going to be close. As you mentioned, Chase Elliott put up a great time. But now Dale Earnhardt Jr. has better that time. 47.157 for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He now tops the list in round one. And remember, this is just moving you to the final 12. So uh, this is not, not for the pole yet. You just have to get in the top 12 to advance to go into the last round of qualifying. So Earnhardt Jr. and Elliott, that battle is going to continue on and the battle for the pole. Yeah, that was the battle that started the Daytona 500 in February. They were the front row. Chase Elliott and Dale Earnhardt Jr. It was the other way around, though. Elliott had won the pole. Earnhardt Jr. started second. And Marty Snyder. Now let's chat with uh, Daryl Bubba Wallace Jr. in the 43 this weekend. And what are the honest expectations on tomorrow night just because you don't have any experience in the cup car in a draft like this? Yeah, no, I'm getting used to it. I will say it's pretty cool to see an 88 on top of the board right now. It's pretty cool to get that 43 up there, too. But um, it's uh, pumped up right now. I mean, uh, it's a great opportunity for me to go out and kind of the easiest job here. Just hold it, hold it wide open, get a good momentum lap, uh, get up to speed. They hold it pretty well in that second one for our Smithfield Ford team. But I'm going to go out, and I don't know. I don't know what we got. We weren't too great in our single car stuff yesterday. Um, but it's a new day. We got a new attitude with us, so we'll see what we got. You see Cole Witt finishing his lap there, Rick, and he mentions the 88. That's the man he was texting yesterday saying, hey, give me some advice on how to handle this thing in the draft. So going to be interesting to see how Bubba Wallace does in the 43 tomorrow night. That's a pretty good guy to ask advice from as well. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., so much success here at, at uh, Daytona. Yeah, it, it, listen, we talked about these drivers and Kyle Larson joked about how this is going to be some pretty easy driving. Well, these drivers aren't just driving around Daytona. They're doing everything they can. You see right here, Clint Boyer has his left hand out between that small net, window net off the A-post and the big window net to contain the driver in case the car gets upside down or close to the wall. He's filling that gap up with his hand, trying to keep every little bit of air possible out of that race car. It's maybe something they see in the wind tunnel, knowing Clint Boyer, maybe it's something he thinks would help. But, you know, you're riding around here for 47 seconds, Jeff, as a driver, you got to do all you can. You can only run wide open for so long. Is he saying he knows what Clint Boyer is thinking? Because if he no does, one, he's no, the first no. one that's ever been able to know what Clint Boyer is thinking. As we see Paul Menard break into the top 12, just above the cut line. It's amazing to me how these teammates... And when I say these teammates, the entire garage of teammates are working together. You see Hendrick, one, two, three, Stuart Haas, four and five. Then you see another Hendrick car, and then you look down there, the two RCR cars, 11th and 12th. So it seems like they're, whatever notes these teams are sharing are working because they're all running close to the same speeds. Let's go back down pit road and Kelly Stapps. With the newest Daytona 500 champion, Kurt Busch, I kind of asked you about this yesterday, Kurt, but what's the sense? How different is it showing back up to this place now a champion? It's different. It's so cool to come back and to remember that moment in Victory Lane with all these guys, the sponsors, and to say that I conquered Daytona one time. And, uh, I was friends with the track before, but I'm really good friends with her now. 
All right, I got to just show his shoes really fast before I send it back up. How cool are those shoes, a gift from Alpine Stars for his big win? There's not very many people that have those. Daytona 500 champion shoes for Kurt Busch, as we see Mike McDowell. Good lap for McDowell. Good lap. 12th quickest for Michael McDowell, just above the cut line, 47.766.